Okay, I think we can start. Good morning at all. <clears throat> Welcome to this talk about uh, observability. Uh, I'll show you in this, uh, in this presentation how we can uh, implement uh, observability, what observability is, and <clears throat> how we can leverage all those information uh, to monitor and analyze our Drupal website. The, in, in this presentation, we, we see how, how to implement observability just using open source uh, tools, so nothing commercial, <clears throat> and also uh, all tools that we can, you can use uh, on your local machine, so you can test it uh, uh, locally before going to production. <coughs> My name is Luca. Uh, I'm a developer, mainly. Um, I start with Java, then PHP, Go, and so on. Uh, I'm the co-maintainer of the Devel module and the maintainer of the Monolog uh, module. Uh, here are my social links if you want to tweet something or write to me on Drupalorg. I work for Wellnet, which is a uh, which is an Italian Drupal. Uh, Shop, a digital agency. I just turned off the calendar. But, okay. um, we do software development, design, uh, UI, UX, uh, web marketing, uh, testing, and so on. Um, we do uh, machine learning, CEO, uh, etc. Okay, let's start. So, um, just a moment, I want to. <coughs> oh, oh, okay. One more. <laughs> okay. So, uh, today's, uh, uh, today, um, almost everyone is, is working on some kind of distributed system. We have uh, microservices, container, cloud, uh, serverless, and a lot of combination that can uh, complicate the way we uh, deploy, distribute, and manage our, our websites and system. Um, and because of the, the diversity of those distributed system, it's uh, very complex to understand problem, understand how our website uh, performs and something like that. So uh, we, we need a way to uh, observe and uh, monitor the, the, mm, the behavior of our system. And uh, observability is this, is a, meter, is a me measure um, of how well internal state of a system can be inferred just uh, seeing uh, the, the external output. So uh, we, we monitor our system just from uh, uh, the external. Uh, in this way, we can uh, do observability also uh, on production system because we don't need to uh, debug or do something uh, that can slow down our, our website. In effect, we want to observe production environment uh, and metrics like uh, CPU, memory, mm, I.O. are not uh, sufficient anymore because we want to observe our specific uh, custom application, our, our code. So uh, we want to use tools to, to do that. So uh, there are three pillars of observability which are structured logs, metrics, and traces, or distributed traces if you have a distributed system. <coughs> so uh, in, this, uh, in this presentation, we, we saw all those uh, pillars in, in details and how we can uh, implement them in, uh, in Drupal, with Drupal. We need uh, all of those three to understand uh, how our system is going. So we need metrics because it aggregates data, logging because uh, store events, and trace to analyze uh, the request, requests. Okay, let's start with structured, lo structured logs. 
logs are about storing uh, specific events, so um, we want to uh, store in uh, the, um, the events that occur uh, on our system because uh, usually failures in a complex system uh, usually is maybe caused by uh, not a specific system that fails but some different system that fails so we have to uh, reconstruct all the information from the, these different systems. Um, in Drupal it's quite easy to, to do structured logs because uh, we have a, a very uh, battle-tested library which is a <clears throat> PHP generic library. We can use it in, uh, in, uh, in Drupal, which is called Monolog. Monolog is a PS3 compliant library from Jordi Borgiano, the developer of Composer, just to, just to say. And there is a module for both Drupal 7 and for Drupal 8 to integrate uh, Monolog into our website. Mm, because uh, the Monolog module depends uh, on the, monolo on the monolog library, we have to download the monolo monolog module with Composer. The current version is 1.3, so you can add those lines to your Composer JSON and download the monolog locally. Monolog, the monolog module doesn't have any uh, UI to configure the module. Okay, so you cannot configure it uh, using uh, using UI. Um, you configure it uh, directly defining um, services and parameters to, service the, to the service container. So the first thing you, ha you have to do is to create uh, uh, a YAML file, maybe monolog.services.yaml, in the site default folder, usually. And uh, um, this file contains uh, some information. Uh, the first one are those parameters. Uh, we saw details later, but uh, Monolog uh, uh, has channels, handlers, uh, formatters, and processor. processors. So the, um, the handlers uh, is the, uh, how Monolog um, and where Monolog uh, write files. Uh, in this example, uh, we want to write a, a file that rotates some, every day with, uh, with our logs. The formatter is uh, how the, um, um, how monolog uh, write file. In this case, we want structured log. So we can we, we choose uh, JSON as a, as a formatter. And then we want to add uh, some list of uh, processor that uh, uh, usually add information to our log message to, for example, um, record uh, the current user, uh, IP, the referrer, uh, <coughs> the introspection, for example, uh, added to the, to, the, to the log message, uh, the, the line uh, and the file where the <coughs> log occurs. And then for every uh, handlers that we, that we define, we we add um, a service in the same in the same file under the services uh, key that needs to be called monolog.handler. the same name rotating file as this rotating file and then we can uh, define the the actual implementation of the handler so that the class that uh, do the do the work. Uh, the rotating file handler, uh, for example, uh, takes three arguments: the um, path to the file, on the file system where the, where to write the log. Uh, this is uh, uh, rotating, so we have to specify how many uh, days, how many files <coughs> we want to keep before start uh, deleting the old, the older one. So. <coughs> In this case, uh, he creates uh, one file today, one file mm, tomorrow, uh, and uh, uh, after 10 days, he started to delete the first one and, and go on to non uh, occupy um, <coughs> more storage. And then we have to define the level 
from what we start logging. So every log message uh, uh, from info to uh, critical will be uh, written in this uh, in this uh, in this log. Then last uh, last piece we have to uh, add the um, the monologue services YAML file <coughs> to the list of the container YAML uh, uh, array in the settings.php so Drupal's load also those services and parameters uh, into the service container and we can access uh, them from our code. Okay. This is an example for, uh, of a um, of a log message. In this case, uh, is the um, a log uh, from a core module. So when the user performs a login, uh, Drupal uh, log this message session operator for admin. <clears throat> but we can also see other than uh, the, the message, we have uh, the level, um, uh, the date, date, time information, and then. All those extra information are uh, uh, provided by the, the processors. So we have the, the actual file where the log is, the line, it's not a class, so null, the function, and then the referrer, IP, and, and so on, that we can use to um, um, query and uh, extract the data from, uh, from, uh, from logs. We need uh, structured, structured logs uh, uh, exactly to do, to do this, uh, this kind of uh, uh, these things to do. So <clears throat> maybe we can uh, extract uh, um, all logs from uh, some uh, users uh, or all logs from uh, one EP and so on with uh, just a um, stream of strings, uh, maybe or messages to the the, mm, the watchdog routes into the, the database. Maybe it could be difficult to extract. Uh, does uh, does information okay exactly structured logs make it simple to query them and uh, uh, for for a sort of uh, any sort of useful information um, we can write custom monologue you can write custom monologue processor to add uh, some application specific uh, information to your log maybe you can uh, you you have uh, i don't know uh, two different uh, web server Okay, not balanced, uh, and maybe you can you can draw to the log which server reply to uh, a request, for instance, something uh, something like that. Uh, we see uh, later uh, how we can uh, put all those logs uh, in some external application to um, analyze and uh, query query them. Okay. Matrix. <clears throat> so logs uh, are about uh, storing specific events that uh, of course uh, uh, during the uh, life cycle of our application. <coughs> uh, matrix are a measurement uh, at a specific point in time uh, for, for the system. So uh, logs are useful because uh, they uh, carry on a context a message, a file, a IP, and so on. Uh, Matrix uh, um, is, uh, does not uh, um, provide any context because uh, is um, used are used mainly for uh, for aggregates. So uh, we aggregate matrix, and uh, the um, mainly usage uh, for for example um, re responding to this uh, this question. So the number of time. You received an HTTP request. How much time we spend handling requests? How many requests are currently in progress? Number of uh, errors and so on. You can um, uh, think of metrics as a, a, a measure of something that happens during the life cycle of your application that you can uh, sample, aggregate, summarize, correlate. Um, these metrics. Uh, are useful to, to report the overall health of the, of the system and to uh, predict how our system will perform in the uh, future. Okay, to instrument our application, uh, we use uh, um, a software, it's called Prometheus. Um, you can download uh, here if we so 
in a moment I'll uh, use it and uh, install it. Uh, Prometheus was the, the second project uh, to join the, um, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation after Kubernetes, so it's very stable and you can use it in production without any, any problem. How Prometheus works? Prometheus uses uh, um, a pool architecture. Instead of uh, send the metrics uh, to a Prometheus server, it's Prometheus that, that comes to your website to, uh, to, to scrape um, metrics. So we have our application with a client library, we see that in a moment, to uh, instrument the application to expose metrics. Uh, we have uh, this concept with, with this called exporter that used to uh, expose to Prometheus uh, data coming from third-party application or your system, uh, operating system, and, and so on. Then uh, you can configure uh, how, how many times uh, in, a, in a minute uh, the, the Prometheus will scrape your, uh, your application or the data from the exporter. It stores it uh, in some uh, um, time series database because we, we want to, uh, to store the exact time when uh, the uh, metrics are collected. And then we can uh, uh, <coughs> build a dashboard that uses the storage, uh, build the rules and the alerts that uses this data uh, to monitor and uh, maybe uh, contact uh, if, uh, I don't know, the CPU is too, too high, or in case of uh, a specific application, the number of nodes created in a second is too high, or something like that is specific to a, a Drupal application. Okay, so to gather information from our production, production environment, we need to do uh, two things. Instrument our application and extract data from the system. Okay, let's start with instrument our application. Okay, um, we start writing a simple module uh, to implement uh, this concept of uh, observability in, uh, in Drupal 8. Uh, it's uh, in, in sandbox in, in, uh, today, but uh, we, we plan to release an uh, initial version during this, uh, this DrupalCon and then uh, everyone who can contribute to, to the development. Okay, uh, the module is called Observability. The short name is O11YAM, uh, Y. And uh, it, use a, it uses a, a library. It is, is the, um, that does not exist uh, an official client uh, for uh, Prometheus for PHP. <laughs> Uh, they maintain the version for Golang, for Node, but not the one for PHP, but there is a project that do that, that's, that uh, implement this. So we can use this library. Uh, of course, we need to install the observability module with Composer because it depends uh, from a, a PHP library. And then uh, <coughs> we can uh, start uh, a, a collector registry, which is the uh, component that collects all the metrics uh, inside our system and expose them to, uh, to Prometheus. You can use different kind of storage. Uh, PHP is a stateless uh, application, so uh, we need a way to store those metrics uh, during time because mm, we, saw late, we see later uh, Prometheus may be it's configured to come to our website every five seconds, 10 seconds. In the meantime, we need to store all, uh, all the metrics. There are some kind of different storage. One is APC, uh, but uh, it has the problem that um, if we restart the server, all is uh, uh, destroyed because the APC is in memory. Uh, we can use uh, Redis uh, uh, with storage, Redis with uh, persistent storage, for example, to, to overcome this. Okay. Uh, Prometheus uh, has three, mm, three types of metric, metrics. Um, one of is uh, counters. 
counters uh, is used to represent uh, a single monotonically increasing uh, value. So for example, number of nodes created or number of requests served. For example, every, every time uh, one of those events occur, we add one to the metric, for example. Then usually we, we in, in, uh, in the graphic we saw the dashboard later, we in effect we see the, a line that go ups and down because uh, we don't want to uh, show a graphic uh, a graphics with a, a line that uh, uh, increase uh, for forever, but we want uh, the difference, uh, the, the, the range of the value during time. So uh, usually we don't want the number of nodes created, we want the number of nodes created in a minute or uh, in a time frame, so the graph go up and down because uh, this value changes over, over time. Another kind of metric is gouges that uh, <coughs> represent a single numerical uh, value that go up and down. So think, for example, uh, the, the, um, the amount of the, the CPU. Okay, CPU can go up, can, can go down, so you can uh, onboard the memory load, for example. The last one is histograms, uh, that uh, it's the, the last user, but uh, it's sample observation uh, over uh, in a bucket. So, for example, uh, it, it uh, divided all the value in in specific bucket, uh, uh, and then you can visualize uh, the information this way, for for example. <coughs> okay, so. Um, for example, um, in a, we can implement uh, a standard uh, Drupal hook with an entity insert. Okay, this is implemented in the observability module. And then, uh, simply, we can uh, we, we, def we, we define a, a service to to manage all these uh, these informations. With it. it's called uh, observability dot matrix. And then we can uh, get or register a new counter, for example. So uh, in this case, the library um, provides uh, an, an existing counter or create a new one if it doesn't exist. In this method, we define a namespace, for example, Drupal, uh, the name of the metric, a help about uh, the metrics or a message that can use to explain uh, what a metric uh, is, and then uh, a series of labels that add information to the metric. So in the Prometheus uh, uh, data store, we have a metric and uh, uh, labels attached to it uh, to query for metrics uh, to um, aggregate or something like that. And then we uh, uh, call this ink by, so we, we increment the counter by one and um, set the value for the label, for the labels for, in this case, uh, Type uh, is the entity type ID, and the bundle is the bundle method. In, uh, in this way, uh, we uh, add one to this, uh, to this entity insert metric that represents uh, um, the fact that a user, so some user had, uh, has had a one, one, uh, one entity, for example, an old or something like that. <coughs> The observability module exposes uh, a URL. The standard name uh, in, in Prometheus is uh, slash matrix. So if you go to the, to the website slash matrix, uh, you see it is a textual representation is a um, specific of, uh, of Prometheus. Uh, you, see, you see here the, the help label you have set in the, in the code, uh, the name of the, of the counter, and uh, a list of, uh, of values. For example, in this case, we have uh, one uh, one article and two comments created in uh, in this website. Okay, so in, we can add all those uh, uh, metrics to our code. The observability model will implement uh, some uh, generic. Uh, uh, metrics, so the number of nodes, the number of entity, and something like that. We will add uh, some standard uh, standard metrics, but you can use those uh, those services, those uh, in this um, method 
to add uh, metrics to your custom code. So maybe uh, you, if you have an uh, e-commerce and want to um, have metrics about uh, how many uh, cart uh, are created uh, or many something like that, you can add to your to your custom code, for example. Okay. Then we need to extract data from the system. Uh, there is a, a component, it's called node exporter, that expose uh, uh, OS matrix from uh, Unix, uh, Unix system. Oops. Okay, it's written in Go, so it's easily deployable uh, everywhere. And uh, usually we can use the not, expo uh, not exporter to expose that about CPU, memory, file system, uh, disk, network, and uh, a lot of things. Okay, then we have our instrumented application, not exported that exposed data about uh, the system. We need to configure and run a primitive server somewhere to aggregate this. Uh, I say the, at the beginning that we want uh, to uh, try all those uh, things uh, locally on our our local uh, uh, PC. So, for example, we can use uh, um, the, um, the Docker image from Prometheus to run it locally. <clears throat> then we, uh, we start by uh, creating a file to configure how we want to scrape data. So, in this case, we have uh, two scraping, one uh, for the Drupal in internal, internals and one from the node exporter and we see that we say that we want to scrape every five uh, seconds the, the Drupal uh, endpoint and every uh, five seconds the node exporter endpoint and where they are this is the internal uh, docker name for the Apache container and the node exporter container then we can start uh, uh, Prometheus using uh, the, the official uh, Docker image, uh, mount the, our configuration, uh, and those are the, co the command to, commands to, to configure the server. If all works uh, correctly, all the data uh, are collected by Prometheus and stored in, the, in its data, data storage. <clears throat> Prometheus has a, a, a very basic uh, dashboard it's not so useful, so uh, we, we need a, a better uh, solution to, to query and visualize data. And to do that, we use another uh, uh, open source software, which is called Grafana. And uh, Grafana allows you to query, visualize, alert, and understand your metrics and uh, on logs. And logs. Um, or we, uh, Grafana also has a Docker image to, to run it locally or everywhere, <laughs> and uh, it uses uh, uh, the PromQL, which is the query language from Prometheus, to extract the data and build a um, dashboard. So, for example, uh, we want to extract the data with those, uh, those queries, for, for example, uh, uh, the PHP request per second, uh, the entity created per second, PHP memory peak, and CPU usage, and we want to put them uh, on the same dashboard to see uh, correlation between. So we want to see if we create uh, more nodes, uh, the CPU goes up, goes down, uh, the memory, etc. <coughs> so uh, this is a screenshot from, uh, from Grafana, and we see the, the for example, in, in this example, we uh, we start creating a lot of requests, uh, and uh, um, some of these requests creates also uh, entities. So we go that the request goes up, the number of uh, uh, requests goes up, the memory uh, occupied by PHP goes up, the CPU goes up, the free memory goes down, and so on. So we can uh, correlate those, those, inf those information uh, coming from the system, our application, and so on. Okay, um, Grafana is also useful for, for, uh, show, for um, uh, analyzing logs, sorry. Uh, there is a project, it's called Loki. It's a new project from Grafana, Grafana Labs, Labs that is used to scrape and aggregate uh, logs uh, similar uh, the way Prometheus do. 
So we can add to the, to the same dashboard when we have a CPU and so on, we can also add logs from our application uh, to also be better correlate a log message with uh, uh, some other metrics that occurs in the system. Okay, <coughs> distributed traces. So logs are, for, are uh, about storing specific events, uh, metrics are measurement uh, at a point in time. What we uh, miss is uh, uh, a way to trace a request that uh, uh, arrives to our system, uh, uh, go to all the layer maybe of, of our Drupal, go to some external microsystem, uh, microservices, and, uh, and we want to trace all, uh, all these requests. We use another um, software which is uh, it's called uh, Open Tracing. <coughs> Open Tracing is, a, is the API, it's vendor uh, neur mm, neutral API to instrument uh, application to expose uh, trace. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> we, we need uh, um, tracing because uh, uh, logging and metrics <coughs> uh, <coughs> We, we cannot uh, use only logs and metrics uh, to uh, elaborate, the, to reconstruct the journey of a, of a request uh, through a distributed system. So uh, we use traces for that. Uh, take, for example, uh, a, a Drupal Commerce uh, website uh, where the, the price of the products uh, comes uh, from an external uh, microservice, for example. So they are not into Drupal, but when the a user uh, mm, open a page with a product, the price comes from somewhere. Okay. Um, for example, uh, in Drupal Commerce, we, we have this concept of resolver. <coughs> this is a, a, a price resolver. So to extract, uh, to, to define the price of a product uh, with a SKU, <coughs> we do a, external, a call to external, uh, external system. <coughs> We want to trace the fact, the fact that, that uh, the request for a product page go to the Drupal, then go to the microservice, then return to Drupal, and so on. Exactly. <coughs> to, to do that, uh, um, open tracing is the, is the protocol uh, that defines how uh, traces are done. We use um, another software which is called uh, Jaeger. That is the, the equivalent of Grafana for Prometheus. So Jaeger is the dashboard that um, uh, we use to visualize uh, all those things. It's from Uber Technologies. And uh, uh, for example, uh, this is uh, the, the load of a product page of the product page in the in Drupal Commerce. So uh, we see all the, we, we, we trace uh, in the actual version of the observability module, we trace uh, <coughs> the event calls uh, and tweak rendering, okay? In the later version, maybe we can also trace uh, the service invocation or uh, the mm, database queries and, and so on. <coughs> but we can see that uh, uh, all, the, all the request passes, uh, all the, <coughs> layers of Drupal of the event, uh, one after, uh, after the other. <coughs> Drupal uh, is not multi-thread, so the calls are sequential. <coughs> and then uh, here, the Drupal performs an external call that reaches another uh, system, which is this uh, price resolver that resolves the price uh, and uh, uh, returns the information to Drupal that continue to build the, the, the page. Okay. <clears throat> we can uh, use different clients for Jaeger in PHP. Uh, the most complete is this uh, Jaeger PHP. The code is not so good, but it's the only one that works. Uh, <clears throat> okay, we use the only uh, the observability module <clears throat> to generate a trace ID when the request arrives to, <clears throat> to our system. Trace events, trace uh, mm, symphony events, trace twig uh, generation. <coughs> Sorry, and to propagate the trace ID to every uh, Gazel calls, so we can uh, use those, this trace ID in every system uh, involved. <coughs> For example, 
This is a middleware in, uh, in the observability module that uh, starts uh, the, the first span that is uh, one of the line we saw in the, in the Jaeger uh, dashboard. So before handling the request, uh, it starts the span. After handling the request, uh, it's mark, it marks the span as uh, finish and then flush the, all the spans collected uh, to Jaeger. With this code, we will see in the, in the Jaeger dashboard that we have mm, a span for the service Drupal uh, at the URL uh, slash product slash one uh, that uh, <coughs> last, uh, the, 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 the duration is one second. One second. <coughs> then, for example, uh, this is also in the observability model. We can uh, uh, overwrite the, the, the client factory from, from the core with a, a custom one that do the, the same of the, as, the, as the parent, but uh, in, with uh, the, the open, open, uh, open tracing library, we inject the trace ID into the uh, HTTP header, so it can uh, retrieve from, uh, from the external service. In this case, I, I develop a quick uh, Go uh, microservice uh, <coughs> that take the S SKU of the product and return a price. And uh, we, we have uh, the, the handler that uh, responds to the uh, REST uh, query and uh, <coughs> a function called computed price that uh, do all the work. And we can see that uh, Jaeger is able to reconstruct uh, all, the, all the journey and uh, the duration of every, of every component uh, in time. <coughs> And so we, <coughs> we uh, can uh, explore all the, uh, <coughs> the trip that a request uh, do in, in, the, in this layer. Okay, one thing, one last thing um, that we, we have to do is to correlate um, traces with the log because usually uh, I go to, to, the tra to the Jaeger dashboard Maybe I discover some problem, but I need to, uh, to, to access to the log uh, of this specific uh, request, for example. So uh, we need to correlate uh, traces win log. Uh, this is simple because uh, we can add uh, processors to, to the monolog uh, module. <coughs> so we, the, the observability module provides a new processor <coughs> for monolog that uh, adds a trace ID to every, to every log. And <coughs> so we have uh, an open tracing here in the processors list, uh, and then uh, this is the same log as before, but with the, the trace ID message. So we can use this to filter and, and query uh, log messages uh, by trace ID. OK. Uh, next steps are uh, finished the observability module. Um, um, one thing uh, we, we can do is to uh, web profiler do something similar, but only in the um, Drupal world, so not uh, uh, outside. Maybe we can integrate uh, uh, the observability module uh, with web profiler to, uh, because they, same, they do the same thing, and uh, write instruction to set up all the stack, uh, document, uh, and, and so on. Okay, uh, here are some blog post uh, that uh, explain uh, uh, a lot of things, in, interesting things about uh, metrics uh, and uh, uh, open tracing uh, and so on and so on. Okay, just a quick uh, slide about we are hiring uh, because uh, so if you want to join our team, uh, drop me a line. Uh, Join us for contribution tomorrow. I will be there in the morning, so if you want to uh, um, view the code of the observability module or to uh, promote yourself to help uh, developing it, uh, you're welcome. And uh, thank you. I don't know if we have time for questions. Uh, 
Bonne question. Ben, il fait bonne question. I'm here. Uh, the... So, uh, I actually have two questions, but I'll have to choose, I guess. <laughs> uh, so, um, those metrics, uh, how do you handle those uh, in a more distributed system? Because uh, if you run your Drupal multiple times, uh, then you can either retrieve the metric from <coughs> one instance, or you could retrieve metrics that accumulate for all instances, but based on the type of metric, you want one or, or the other. So how do you ma make that work? So you have different systems? Uh? No, yeah. uh, you have a single Drupal okay. installation, but it runs multiple times, uh, like redundancy or okay. Uh, okay. Uh, scaling up. <coughs> So sometimes you want information for just one instance, for example, the amount of requests, because it tells you a lot about how your load balancing is functioning. Okay, okay. Uh, but for example, entity inserts is something that you probably want aggregated over all the instances. So how do you handle that? Yes, uh, you can add uh, labels uh, to, to metrics. So for, for instance, you can add uh, um, also the um, the, the, the Drupal instance you, you run, so uh, one of the, from the, from the pool uh, from your Drupal. <coughs> and then in, in Grafana you can write a, write a, <coughs> a query and ex extract data all, um, only for one instance or for all instance and, uh, and aggregate them differently. Okay, cool. Thanks. Okay, thank you.